So what do fighting games and photography have in common? At first glance, you might think nothing at all. Well, folks, it's time to step into the dojo. Fighting games can teach us an important lesson about mindset and creativity, one that you can apply to a lot of other hobbies and interests that you might enjoy aside from just photography. This lesson being that the goal is not to win, but to improve. Since its release in early summer of 2021, Guilty Gear Strive has been the game that has taken up the majority of my attention. I dabbled in some early Guilty Gear titles, but never went beyond fighting the computer in arcade mode. The idea of the skill gap between my beginner self and a seasoned online fighter aficionados was an intimidating mountain to climb. This is a very common feeling for beginners in any hobby really, but especially for beginners in fighting games. Not many folks want to pay money to then have their rear end handed to them match after match for hours on end. The reality is, is that it's not so bad and fighting games aren't as hard as you might think if you look at them through the correct lens, pun intended. But that's a topic for another video. It is, however, an important point to make because it is the first thing that we can learn from fighting games. All too often, we compare ourselves to where other people are in their journey and not improving in our own journey. Remember, the goal is not to win, but to improve. We cannot improve when we focus on what other characters can do or what level of skill the other players are that can use them. Most would consider this level of thinking the scrub mentality, constantly blaming outside factors instead of relying on your own improvement or lack thereof as to why you have yet to get good. In photography, it's just as easy to become discouraged by scrolling an Instagram feed as it is to be inspired wishing we could make work of the same quality that the algorithm feeds us, and sometimes it's really hard to accept that. We want our wins now, but without improvement, there are no wins. The reality is that in both photography and in fighting games, you are going to lose. A lot. In fact, you're going to lose significantly more often than when you win, especially at first. That's okay though, because your goal isn't to win, it's to improve and through each incremental improvement, we will inevitably earn our wins. Though the end results are extremely subjective, art is, after all, an expression of creative skill. Creative skill is the knowledge of the technical side of things. It's framing, the exposure triangle, editing, and timing. And expression is how you use those skills to tell your creative story. In a fighting game, it's the same concept. Your creative skills are your combos, your knowledge of frame data and matchups, and your ability to execute your game plan. Through these tools, a proficient competitor will find victory through their expression. It's a very unique thing to face two different people using the same character. No one really fights the exact same way, even at beginner levels. Expression exists as part of the natural way that we learn. Leaning towards tools that fit our playstyle in each different situation molds our player expression, and it is molded by our learning process as we discover new abilities and techniques. By recognizing that in both photography and learning fighting games, we must develop a robust understanding of techniques, we are able to view our losses in a more positive and productive manner. Sure, that shot you took didn't work out. Maybe there's something there. Maybe you took a shot at a practical application of a technique and just fell a little short. It's not all bad, not all is lost. The newfound knowledge is worth the experience. The same goes for fighting games. Sure, that match didn't go your way, but maybe you earned a good interaction after playing better neutral or you cleverly blocked a mix-up this time that normally would have caught you off guard. These little wins, the constant improvements, are the things that lead us to the real big wins in great photos and victory over a tough opponent. Despite the apparent differences, I like using fighting games as an example to draw parallels from. Improvement in both photography and fighting games is so tangible. Fighting games doubly so because of how instantaneous the feedback is. Obviously with digital photography, there is instant feedback, but not in the same way. Sure, you get your results back as they happen, but it's not like your camera can tell you how to make a photo better. And if you missed a moment, then that's it. There's really no replicating it, and it's gone for good. Photography in general requires a significantly higher investment in terms of time. To get better, you need to physically get out of your home and more often and explore the world. This used to also be the case when fighting games in their communities were primarily accessible through arcades. The tangibility in fighting game improvement, however, is so instantaneous. The average match lasts about one to three minutes, depending on the game, and the results speak for themselves. It's win versus losses. The more you improve, the more you see that you will win, and the more that you win, the higher up in the ranks that you go. Sure. Like a digital camera, the game does not tell you what you can do better. You will have to rely on a strategy of self-critical review for that. But the only room for subjective victory is within your mindset, 
objectively, the game goes one of two ways. Another big difference is that fighting games are competitive. You are facing off against someone else. Unless you are entering in some sort of competition, photography is purely a journey of self-improvement. As I previously mentioned, our goal here is to focus on improvement and not wins. The playing field between the two things becomes level when we stop concerning ourselves with what others are doing and focus on our own improvement. The reality is that creativity is a lifelong journey. Self-improvement is a lifelong journey. They are one and the same. Except that you're probably not going to be a superstar from the get-go. Except that this is going to take some time. Except that you are going to lose and also have fun along the way. Sure. Frustrations and discouraging moments will happen, but they only get to us when we are focused on winning and not improving. When we switch up our mindset and believe in our ability to improve over all else, the end goal becomes trivial. Think honestly with yourself. With whatever creative or competitive thing that you like, what is the end goal? Is it to be good at that thing? Or the best maybe? Or just to get better? For most of us, it's kind of hard to define. Being the absolute best at something is a pretty lofty and unrealistic goal. Personally, letting go of the idea of an end goal in my creative pursuits has been incredibly freeing. Not being concerned with what I have not or will not be able to achieve allows me to put much more energy towards my success. Understanding that I am not just going to fire up Guilty Gear, play at a tournament level, means that I can just enjoy my time working towards Celestial and appreciating the improvements along the way. The journey has to be more rewarding, or else for me, and for most people, the game wouldn't be worth playing. With photography, it has allowed me to mentally categorize my work into different purposes. There's the basic stuff, the everyday snaps, the photos, I'll take it a friend's birthday, or the shot of a pretty flower in bloom with the sun hitting it just right. It's not the stuff that makes waves for me, but it's a necessary part of the process. Like labbing a combo string in training mode, it's the supplementary practice needed to experiment and improve. It gets me used to searching for good light, seeing simple things that are being framed up perfectly in my everyday life so that even when I don't have a camera on hand, I'm staying sharp. The other half is the performance, the actual one-on-one. -on -one. It's the work that makes the time in training mode worth it. I've challenged myself to see more serious work in a project-based manner shooting bodies of work focused on a subject or an idea, and then compiling that work into books, prints, or photo essays. It's freed up my creative bandwidth to think more long-term and not to worry about the temptation of photos that don't fit the specific subject. In a way, it's been as important to ignore what I shouldn't be doing as it has been to focus on what I should be doing. Even then, another fighting game parallel is drawn. It's playing great neutral and executing a game plan versus landing a flashy combo. To me, when it comes to improvement in any skill, that most important thing is mindset. It's very easy to apply this way to thinking to other things that you're into. I find that I can replace fighting games entirely with something like going to the gym. And the ideas about putting yourself on a path of gradual improvement over time keeps you much more sustainably motivated. Of course, it goes without saying that setting goals is a very necessary part of any journey of improvement and that you should give yourself targets to hit to stay motivated. But just don't forget the meaning of the path itself. It's not to win, but to improve over days, over weeks, months, and years. Creativity is a lifetime of winning and losing, failure and learning, and most importantly, finding out who you really are deep down. I just want to give a quick shout out to some of the creators that influenced this essay. There are so many awesome people out there making fighting game content that has kept me motivated and really just changed how I approach the genre. Fighting games are fun as hell, and although learning them can be a big mountain to climb, the payoff is worth it. Um, I've been watching a lot of Sejam and a lot of Romola. They're both really excellent. Nothing has felt better in a video game than, you know, getting a big win in a fighting game. And I'm going to leave some links in the description of the video of some other videos that you could check out that have been really awesome to watch and have been influential to me. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around for this one and hearing what I have to say. Let me know if you plan to pick up, you know, Guilty Gear Strive, Street Fighter VI is really hyped up right now, DNF Duel is right around the corner, or anything else that might be coming out soon. I will see you all next time. Thanks.